What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm here today on the busy, busy streets of Rome. Today we went and we did a few things around the city. One of them being we went and saw the Bone Chapel. Highly recommend it if you're in Rome. Super weird, freaky and interesting. Definitely gonna give my children nightmares and so we decided to take the kids to a playground close by in the meantime so that they can put their mind on something else other than a ton of Franciscan skeletons. And while they are over there, I thought I would share a principle that I am trying to live by. It's fairly new for me and I am finding it to be actually very helpful. Now there is this old saying that the best camera is the one that you have with you. And if that is true, then this is probably the best camera ever made. What I mean by this is your phone, whatever model it is, it's the best camera ever made because it is the one you always have with you. But it is also very possible that you have an everyday carry camera as well. For me, that camera is the Leica Q2. Whether it's in my backpack every day when I go to work or when I'm out carrying just a sling like I am today by Clever Supply, this is the greatest sling ever made. More on that in a different video. I always have the Q2 with me. But here's the thing, if I was to shoot my Leica Q2 as I shoot my iPhone, which again is probably the greatest camera ever made by the logic of the best camera being the one that you have with you, then that means at the end of the day, out with the family or the kids or just things that I'm doing around town, it means that I'm going to have a hundred, maybe hundreds, maybe even a thousand if it is just an epic day, Q2 files of things like my daughter running around a park or my son doing his homeschool work or maybe my wife uh, working on some of her sketches for her business. I don't always shoot my images with the intent to go into Lightroom and edit every single photo I capture during the day. And who does? I mean, we do the same thing with our iPhones. We have a moment, we point, we shoot, we move on. And then on our camera rolls, we have those anytime we want to recall that memory and take a look and remember that moment. But I bet that many of you, like me, keep your Q2 or your Sony, Canon, whatever you're shooting, always in RAW, always at a high resolution, always ready to be edited. And I want to propose the question today, is it necessary? Should you always shoot in RAW or are there times where JPEG is acceptable because as you may already be aware, unless you put your phone into raw mode, you're shooting JPEG already every day as you take images. So shooting JPEG on a Leica or shooting JPEG on a Canon or Sony, it's not some lesser experience. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna walk over to a few different viewpoints that are over here, overlooking the city, the Spanish steps. I've got my Q2. I'm gonna put it into JPEG mode and I'm gonna put it into JPEG, high contrast, black and white. I'm gonna shoot this camera as if it's a monochrome and then I'm gonna switch it to color and do some color JPEGs as well on standard. For resolution, I'm gonna put them into a small size because I don't need huge megapixel files of these JPEGs. And we're just gonna have a look at these JPEGs straight out of the camera, not edited, no edit on them whatsoever, and see how they look when we treat the Q2 as a JPEG everyday camera. And when the time comes that you wanna shoot it into RAW, you just quickly change the menu setting and you're good to go. So let's walk on over to these overlooks and take some shots. This is a very, very busy area. All right, let's go grab a spot on this rail here. I always appreciate seeing the influencers out here doing their influence. Is that a phrase, is that a thing? Do you do influence? Can't go anywhere in the city without seeing somebody leaning up against the rail, doing an influencer pose and snapping that shot, getting that banger, saucing up that banger. Very 2018 of them. I feel like the era of the influencer is over. Thank God for it. Coming down to this lower overlook because the upper one was a little nuts but this one might be better because we can see the fountain. Let's go over here. All right, we're gonna grab this spot right here. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna shoot a few 
black and white JPEGs here on the high contrast black and white mode on the Leica Q2. I'm not changing any of the film style settings, just going default with it. I'm gonna shoot some looking this way, which is towards the fountain from the top of the Spanish steps. And I'm gonna shoot some going this way of the church, which we'll see in just a second. Then I'm gonna switch it over to color and we're gonna take a few with color. I'm shooting them at 12 megapixels, again, because that's what this shoots, unless I put it into the high res 48, I don't even know nor do I care. I don't use 48 megapixels on the phone. Don't see any practical reason to do that. We've got a few scenes here. Again, we've got down the Spanish steps. We've got up here to the church. We've got a few buildings around us. And then we've got some activity with people coming down the stairs. It is 3.30 in the afternoon. It is completely bright, harsh light, barely a cloud in the sky. This is about the worst conditions you could ask to shoot in in midday lighting but we're gonna treat that as irrelevant because moments don't wait for light. All right, so here we go. Let's take a few shots here. And one of the keys to shooting JPEG is making sure you get it right in camera, which means that the exposure needs to be right or as close to right as possible. My composition needs to be right because I'm shooting 12 megapixels and I'm gonna get no space to crop here. Again, that's great. That's what I would do with my phone as well. As we think about composition, one of the reasons why I like to shoot black and white, at least on the EV, even if I'm shooting raw DNGs, is that it helps me see negative space. I've talked about this a lot in another video, which I'll link above. Seeing negative space, like in the scene right here, it helps create a more balanced composure. And for me, shooting in black and white does that. Whereas shooting in color, I may not notice the negative space as much. Let me grab one or two more. I like this shot right here, let's spin it. place is perpetually a madhouse. Always. People everywhere. I mean, I'm one of them. I'm no different than the other tourists in this town and I recognize that. I am loving the scene I just got. And that's what I was getting at with the like waiting for the moment. There's this girl sitting down here by herself in the shade. All these people are coming up the steps and by waiting like 15, 20, 30 seconds, I was able to get a shot with no people. Patience is one of the tenets of good photography. Okay, I mentioned that behind me, there's a church. So I'm gonna grab a shot of the church from down here. We're gonna switch back to that high contrast black and white. Okay, so I'm heading down the steps now. We're gonna go over here to the fountain, grab a few shots just on the street as well as of the fountain in color, maybe a little black and white too, and see how these JPEGs turn out. I walk down the stairs, which now means I get to walk back up the stairs. But as I'm going up, let me get my mind off of the climb and wrap things up here. Do you think that shooting JPEG on a Leica Q2 is overkill or just right? Tell me on the Goldilocks spectrum where it lands. Because it may be a fair statement to say carrying around a Leica Q2 when you might have the best camera ever just feels like complete overkill. But if you want the Leica look and you want those JPEGs, maybe you're an influencer and you want to sauce them up, I think a case can be made for the JPEG on the Leica Q2. All right, 
Let me know what you think. And let me know if you're a JPEG shooter and what your experiences are like. I'm gonna go try to find some shade, sit down and breathe. Cause I am obviously out of shape. Cause those stairs, they just wore me out. All right guys, see you next time.